Hi, I'm Rich Wildebeek and I'm working, I'm showing you my third video about my example, how I think you should do science or open science. So I already showed you in a previous video why I think that's a good idea and also you should have been set up already. That means you already have a GitHub repository for your article uh, and also Travis to make to check if it actually can reproduce your work. Up until now your work is not much, it's just an article, there's no experiment in there at all. But for this step, step two out of five, but we start counting from zero, uh, so it's the third step, uh, we're going to actually write the article. Uh, but still you'll see uh, it's not, we don't go into much detail, especially the results will be mostly um, stop figures. But after that we will add a timestamp to our articles. We optionally ask for a review, we process that feedback and add another timestamp. Stamp. And the most important thing in this step is the hypothesis. Uh, it makes you pr if you write down what your hypotheses are now and you put a timestamp on it, uh, you can actually say that you already predicted that or that the result was expected or that the result was unexpected. Alright, so uh, we go start with the abstract. So the abstract is where we um, make a summary about what we're going to do. And I already opened up the tech file for this article, the K3 article, and this will also introduce um, the idea of my research that I'll be doing here. So we start with uh, general things. So K3 is a famous Flemish or Dutch music is a Flemish music, famous Flemish music group. Uh, recently, or I think two years ago, they have changed uh, their formation. Um, it is unknown, uh, rumors claim that the new formation is worse than the old one. Here we investigate if that claim is true based on reviews of their music before and after the new formation. formation. We find that the new formation is well, we don't know. So it may be worse, um, equal, or it may be uh, better. Is is better. Dot. That is our abstract. That's what we're going to do. So the next step will be to write down our hypotheses. And uh, it's not there yet, so I'm going to add that section. Hypothesis. So this is the most important thing for now. So I like to write down a null hypothesis. Um, um, I like to do it with some kind of fancy layout, but for now I just write it down in text. Hypothesis, hypothesis zero, or just I used to have one hypothesis. Um, uh, uh, hypothesis dot. The null hypothesis will be that the music is equally enjoyable. There's no reason to assume these rumors are true. So we, we could also assume that the, that the new group indeed has worse music, but there is no evidence yet. So we assume that the music is equally enjoyable. The, and then we need to specify that. So our null hypothesis is that ratings given to music to the songs given to the previous formation, to the previous formation are equally, are as high as ratings, ratings given to the songs given to the current formation. 
So, and this is very important. So I already say that um, it will have a distribution of ratings. So this also implies there will be some statistics. Uh, our methods, they will, they will need to, to, to confirm or reject this hypothesis. Uh, and that you'll, so, that, so this is definitely the thing you want to get right in this step. Like what is it that you want to prove or disprove? In the next step, we're going to write down our method. And for our method, you need to do a bit of research. So I wrote down in my hypothesis that the ratings given to the song given to the previous formation are as high as ratings given to the songs given by the current formation. These ratings are on a scale from uh, 1 to 10. We use the Dutch numbering system because I'm Dutch. So, um, so th that's an assumption. And because of that, we're going to write it down. Um, ratings. We use, uh, like, so we can't, uh, so we should specify it in hypothesis, ratings as a value from 1 to 10, where 1 is worst and 10 is best. Um, so now we, uh, now we make our hypothesis a bit more explicit. And I, in my methods, I'm not going to assume a normal distribution because of uh, these ratings go from one to ten, and I feel you can't, you cannot assume that. I don't, I feel you can't. So we assume that the data. We do not assume. We do not assume that the data follows a normal. And the data are the ratings. We do not assume that the ratings which are values, which are values, which are values follow a normal distribution. Due to this, we use, uh, and uh, so I, I just looked it up, like which statistics test should I use? So I have the feeling I should use the man within you test because it does not assume if you scroll down assumptions so it it assumes that all the observations from both group are independent of one another uh, that's true because they're different songs the responses are ordinal we can do that we can say that grades that like ratings are lower or higher the null hypothesis is that the distributions of both samples are equal yeah if they're equally good we can assume that and the general hypothesis is that the distributions are not equal. That's the alternative. Yes, yeah, sure, we can do that. So that's why I think we should use the man with the U test. And I think we should use, yeah, so we're going to use the man with the U test. We use the man with the U test to test if the distributions, distributions um, are the same. Also, a statistical test has an alpha value. Uh, let's take a look at how they calculate that. Uh, we'll also find it out later, but it's not important. Um, we will be using an alpha va a value, a value of alpha of 0.05. Uh, so the, in biology, we commonly use that value. Uh, so I'll, I'll use it here. Like there's no reason to, to use smaller alpha values. Because I have no idea yet, um, so I write it down. Because um, there has not been done any previous research on this. Something like this. Previous research on this. Uh, I think it should be CO2 tested. I don't. Know. Well, I will figure that out later. But at least we have our hypothesis in. Um, so there will be a p-value. If the p-value is below the alpha value, the hypothesis is accepted. And the, um, uh, this makes us conclude, 
conclude making us making us conclude that the groups are equally enjoyable else we will reject the null hypothesis and conclude the groups differ in enjoyability in the next step we're going to write down our results with stop figures so we don't have the results yet but we do know uh, how we will be displaying them so I made a picture it's called fig1.png so I expect that my results will look something like this I will actually I choose to plot it like this so I'll use a box plot so there's formation 1 and formation 2 this is the old formation this is a new formation that needs to be put in the legend um, rating goes from 1 to 10 so that will be my scale and there will be like some st uh, some statistics as well but um, this will be my figure I'll make it a bit smaller yeah. so uh, I'll just sketch a figure so I know what I'll be how I'll be plotting it in the future uh, great we have to write it down so our results are um, um, we find that um, the ratings are less equal more enjoyable enjoyable between the groups uh, actually that's false we find that the ratings are different or similar that's what our statistics test from our man with new test from our ah yeah so you should write it down um, we get a p value of well we don't know unknown in from our man with new test from our man with new test this means that the groups are well either equally or differently enjoyable the ratings for the two groups are plotted in figure one um, from um, uh, that's it and we should put the figure here uh, I'm going to look up how to do that um, I need to look that up figure the so the figure should be here figure here so uh, yep that's our result with the stop figures next step the next step will be to write down the conclusion and I went ahead a bit of myself um, because I already wrote, wrote that if you get the p-value of something what this means and uh, that's a conclusion and it should be in the conclusion conclusion from our p-value from our p-value we conclude we conclude that the groups are equally or differently enjoyable and um, we can see in the box plots if one of the two groups is more enjoyable um, but that's just by eye um, we observe in figure one that the first or second group is more enjoyable um, if there's a difference if there is a difference and we don't know that then so we don't do any statistical tests if the two uh, the two ratings do differ we didn't test for that so but we can see it in the figure that's why you put in the figure uh, to be able to say uh, something as well like it's interesting to know like if the groups differ then people ask how do they differ which group is better so that's our conclusions uh, that's still very simple so our next step is the discussion and um, you'll see that I'll go back a bit uh, because um, 
one of the things is how we obtain our uh, so so what's wrong in our analysis well uh, one thing is how we obtain the data so we obtained the data from the reviews by two done to by, by from the reviews done by only two uh, people this may result in a bias still because it is the best data set available there was no other option still because it's the only data set available there is no even if it's a bias because it is the only data set available there is no other option um, so I should write that down I think so that's probably in the methods in the methods we do not assume that the ratings for one is due to this user we'll be using a value of mm -hmm. um, I think we should should go first we obtain ratings ah, now I can nicely put it there which are values from 1 to 10 where one is there from a website in which two people have rated K3 songs um, so that's how we obtain our data right uh, I like to put a paragraph for that paragraph data set just to uh, uh, just to note just just to summarize up the the, ch the, the paragraph um, also um, uh, st statistical test and we should also merge that because that's a statistical test um, rejection or exception of null of hypothesis I like to, 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 to add these chapters but that's just uh, up to you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this the uh, so clearly we have an uh, imperfect data set but it's the only one um, other things no I think it's fine like maybe I use that there are perhaps uh, better statistical tests I don't know uh, so I, I think I've discussed everything I could yeah I think I did oh yeah of course um, another imperfection another imperfection um, additionally uh, additionally uh, only one person reviewed both formations yeah only one person reviewed songs of both formations songs of both formations um, and not all songs have been reviewed um, but still because um, because there's no other data set so that's fine so I think we discussed everything we could here uh, yep I think that's it so our next step will be of our newly written article with the hypotheses formulated very well uh, the rest is, is less relevant already but the hypothesis should be fine um, we're going to uh, make we're going to see if we can reproduce our research which is just text for now but scripts will follow in the future so I go into the folder of, um, of the article I do make it should work it works like there may be problems like setting up LaTeX um, for you so that's a, that, that may be some technical step but taking a look at the article I can see that there's an abstract introduction hypothesis and I, I, I used some kinds I added some fancy listing there's a result I added the figure as a uh, also in LaTeX and so that's great so we wrote our first article of which our hypothesis is clear and that's that that's how it should be so now we can say in the future that if we find a, d uh, a difference in the rate the enjoyability of the groups that we did not expect that uh, because we didn't know 
Uh, this is different than saying that we assume the, the new group to be worse. And then we say, um, then we change our hypothesis to the new group, we assumed it to be worse. But no, we don't know. So here I write down that we don't know, which is honest, that's great. Um, yeah, so I I did add, did some things with the LaTeX, like to inc include a package. Uh, this is how this hypothesis now looks like. I add, it's a bit itemized and some kind of equation. This is how you put the figure in. But you can of course find it uh, on the GitHub, on the repository of the web the website of this article. So we now just made the research locally ourselves. So our next step is to add a time timestamp to the article. Well, to do that, uh, we will need to push it to GitHub. So uh, actually, I'm still displaying the article. We're going to push it. Now we need to add a commit push it. All right, so let's do that. Git add limit. Let's take a look at git status just to see which files have been changed, which are the articles, and I've added figure one. All right. Git add, git commit, um, added hypothesis. Uh, yeah, I should use, there's only one, so it should be hypothesis. Uh, of course, I did also add other chapters, but the most the focus was on getting the hypothesis right. So I push it, and now Git, uh, now Travis will start working on it. So take a look at the Travis website. There she goes, and I predict it will work. If not, you should fix it, um, obviously. But I'm going to add a new version uh, because I just added the hypothesis. And I like people to know that I added the hypothesis. That because so I can say that I didn't expect stuff. Or so I'm going to draft a new release. I called version 0.2. Um, added hypothesis. And also what I'm going to do is I'm already at the PDF I've just created. So people can see what I thought at that time. K3 article, article PDF. You can do that in GitHub, it's great. And I published that release. So now people can see, so if it, let's take a look. If the article I uploaded is correct, of course it is, but uh, let's take a look. Ah, uh, brilliant, looks great. So what I just did, I added a timestamp to my article. So the next step will be to ask for a review. Um, like do the hypothesis, naturally follow the introduction, do the, do the methods, test my hypotheses. Can the conclusion be drawn from the methods? Does the discussion describe all weak spots? And then process that feedback. Um, I, didn't do I don't do that here. I hope that the statistical test I use is correct. Uh, actually, I will check this uh, after this video. Uh, or I ask someone else or whatever. But if you process that feedback, Again, push it to GitHub, add a timestamp, uh, also thank the reviewer, that's always a good idea. Um, but that makes us conclude part two of doing an open science project. In the next video, we'll focus on the method, like how exactly are we going to do it? All right, so that was it, and I wish you a very good day.